Let's talk about the 75 hard challenge rules. There's only five rules to the 75 hard program. I'm gonna go through each one briefly, give you my tips, tricks, and advice on how to get through them successfully. So it'll help you get the results that you're wanting out of the 75 hard program. I finished my program back in January. I learned a lot through experience and a lot more through mistakes. So hopefully what I learned will help you in your 75 hard challenge journey. As usual, if you find this video to be helpful, please hit like on it, maybe even the subscribe. I do these types of videos and other health and fitness videos several times a week. So now let's just get started on the 75 hard rules. Rule number one is to follow a healthy diet. They don't actually tell you what to follow. They kind of leave that in your lap. It's one of the few rules of 75 hard that lets you sort of pick how you want to do it. So what I did is I just went with anything that was 90% health food or whole food. So it had to be like a meat, a veggie, or a fruit. I couldn't do anything like cheeses or uh, breads or anything like that. I could do potatoes if I wanted to. Basically something that comes from the ground or eats from the ground. I was able to do that. The one thing that they do restrict 100% uh, is alcohol. There is no option for alcohol, so you can't say, well, I want my diet to include some alcohol. Alcohol is not allowed at all in the program, but as far as a diet goes, pick something that works for you that you think that you can commit to and stay successful on. Like I said, for me, I didn't count calories, which is something I normally do. I just said, look, if it's a 90% based whole food, I'll do it. Like, so if I could do a salad, throw a little bit of dressing on it, not very much, and it was pretty close to that 90% for me, so that's what I did. So pick something that you think is gonna be uh, doable by you, day one all the way to day 75, pick foods that you like. You don't have to get too crazy on the type of diet, just pick one and stick to it. Okay, so the next rule is the one gallon of water per day, as long as we're talking about the stuff that we're putting into our bodies. So the way that I approach the one gallon of day is I didn't wanna measure throughout the day. I didn't want to fill up a cup every hour and try to keep track on an app. or I just didn't want to mess with any of that. So I just got a gallon uh, jug from Amazon. It was very inexpensive. And what I would do is the night before, I would fill it up with water and I'd put it in the fridge. That way the next day, it was ready to go and it was cold. I found it was easier to drink when it was cold. And then usually I actually transferred it out of that jug into a different container with a wide mouth because I found that drinking it with a wide mouth got more into my mouth at the same time instead of a smaller hole where I'm kind of straw. If you're drinking from a straw, it'd be hard to drink a gallon of water every day. So I highly recommend getting something that takes the measuring out for you. One jug, fill it up once per day, and you are set for the entire day. Something to keep in mind here with the water is there is some debate over whether you are allowed to add powders to the water. So there are some people that say, well, I'm drinking the gallon of water. Who cares if I put protein powder in it. There are some that say, well, actually it's just supposed to be pure water. So it turns out there is an episode, uh, a podcast where the creator Andy Frisella mentioned specifically that it needs to be water without anything added to it, right? So in the end, it's really kind of whatever you want to do uh, as far as what you can live with. You only are going to have to answer to yourself at the end. Of, yeah, you might have some trolls or whatever, but at the end, you're judging yourself. So, you know, do the, the powder, don't do the powder, whichever way you think is best for you. Just so you know, when it comes to the purists of the program and the creator, they say that it needs to be water without anything in it. So keep that in mind whenever you're trying to chug your gallon. All right, the one that gets the most attention, the rule that most people concentrate on is the two workouts per day. Each workout needs to be a minimum of 45 minutes and one of the workouts needs to be outside. So here's how I approached that. I did the one workout either at home in my home gym or at the actual gym itself. And I live in an area where I am able to run, walk. I can do all sorts of stuff outside. I even have a fairly secluded backyard. So sometimes I was out there jumping rope and some different things like that. But here is what I would recommend on that outside workout. And this was something that I learned uh, from talking to other people that had done it before me, which was a lot of people take that second workout for granted and they don't put very much effort and energy into it. And one of the biggest regrets they have by the time they get to the end of the program is that they wish they would have put more effort and energy into that second workout, the one that was outside. A lot of them walked, which is allowed. It just needs to be outside. It just needs to be some sort of workout, some sort of exercise. But I do highly recommend that whatever you can put into it, whatever you've got in the tank, put that same energy into your workout, the same one that you're doing on the inside workout. So for me, I did a lot of hit. 
I did a lot of running. I rarely walked unless I felt like I absolutely had to. So that's my big recommendation for the two workouts per day is on that second workout, on the outside workout, put energy into it, put as much emotion and, um, and effort into it as you do on your inside workout. Um, it is an opportunity to continue to progress. It is an opportunity to, to shed fat, build muscle, just like the inside one. So approach it in the same mindset. Reading the 10 pages a day is uh, one of the rules that I see a lot of people when they are sort of creating their own 75, 75 hard, they're modifying it. This, it's usually because of this rule. They just don't want to read. And if you want to remove the book reading part of it, you're not doing 75 hard. I kind of took it for granted at the beginning and I just sort of sucked it up and said, all right, I'll do it because I want to be able to say I followed the rules at the end. I actually think that this was one of the most important steps of the program because it did force me to A, make time for it, which caused me to you know, try to reprioritize my day, my schedule to make time for it. So it sort of created a scheduling opportunity or, or, or a way to get better with my scheduling throughout the day. And two, like some of the books I read legitimately changed my perspective of what it was I was doing. And still to this day, I still think about quite a bit. For example, the book by David Goggins, um, and I just forgot, uh, uh, can't, I mean, now I'm having a bright brain fart. Can't hurt me. Good grief. Well, the title didn't stick with me, but the stuff in that book sticks with me every time I'm outside running. So, you know, the things that you can learn from this particular aspect, this particular 75 hard rule, I think is important. One of the things that I would mention is before you start the program, uh, actually start doing it, buy yourself a couple of books early. Spend some time figuring out, well, what do you want to read? Look at some reviews. Look at just some of the subject material. It needs to be a self-help book. That's sort of like the rule of it. Other than that, you're on your own. There's one book that I read called QBQ, which is question behind the question, which only took a couple of days to read because it's very big print and there's not a lot of words on the page. It was a nice break from a book like The 12 Rules of Life, An Antidote to Chaos by Jordan Peterson, which was uh, a burden to read. So you get to kind of pick whatever you want to do as long as it's a self-help book. Self -help book. But, you know, I do recommend don't skip this. Uh, find a way to work it in. Don't miss a single day, even if you're reading it and skimming it and not necessarily uh, ingesting it. That's okay. As long as you're still reading it, you're going to have some days that are like that. Totally okay. Just get it done. The last step here is the daily progress pictures. Uh, these are important, obviously, because you want to be able to look back and see how far you've come. But also, it's just about the routine of the day. For me, I did this first thing in the morning whenever I got up, and it helped me to get into that mindset of I have certain things that I need to do today in order to accomplish the rules of this program. And that was an easy way, sort of like making your bed in the morning. It just helped me start off in the right mindset. A couple of recommendations. Do the pictures in the same place in your house and try to do it at the same time of day. That way the lighting is the same. You don't want to look back and feel like the lighting changed uh, how you are viewing your progress or that some days the lighting was good and some days it was bad and then it's hard to compare. Try to do it same time of day in the same room uh, to make sure those comparisons are the same. And save all of them until the very end. There's actually a 75 hard app. I didn't use it, but you can actually sort of put your pictures into that and keep track of them that way. But you know, this one, there's not a lot to this. Uh, it's a very easy step to follow. For me, it was really more about the routine, helping me get into that daily mentality of like, I have rules to follow and this is an easy one for me to actually just start off with uh, to get my mind in the right spot. Um, so that's the 75 hard rules. There's only five. There are some extra ones that they say that you can do after you complete the 75 hard. I'm not going to get into that. This is the baseline 75 hard rules. If you want to see my progress that I made during the, the program, there were times when my weight went up whenever I thought that it should be going down. There were times where I was struggling to get through all 75 hard rules, but I made it through at the end. I had some excellent weight loss. My body composition changed. There's going to be a link in the description down below as well to an article I wrote for my 75 hard challenge results. If you want to go check that out as well as a very thorough breakdown of not just the rules, 
but some of the other things as well, like the books that I read on the program, some of the like pieces of clothing that I had to purchase in order to get through the program, I did it during the winter time. And so I had to get some clothes like to stay warm so I could do my outside workout. So that's gonna be down in the description below as well. And that's all I've got for you. Hopefully this small, brief breakdown was helpful for you. Again, for a fuller breakdown, check that link down below. And that's it. If you got any questions or I'd be curious to hear how your program went, what you discovered about yourself, the things that happened to you that you didn't expect, your results, let me know down in the comments below. That's it. Thank you all so much for watching. If this was helpful, hit like, maybe this subscribe. I'm out of here. Peace out.